um, observation, if I may. Whenever we're in Alaska, right? We're in Alaska, a lot of our cruises take us to Alaska. The pools are quiet. The pools are quiet because it's cold. Nobody wants to swim. Now you're in the Mediterranean. We have a lot of activities. Sometimes we do water volleyball. We have pool games. And we host these activities. And whenever you do that, I can't help, especially as a host myself, you always spot that one guy in a speedo. Now you see them miles away. Now I have no problem with the man wearing a speedo. I feel if you want to wear a speedo, go for it. Do what you gotta do. But I think there should be a rule. And I think that rule should be, if you're that guy wearing a speedo, and you look down and you can no longer see the speedo, then you're over the speedo limit. Well, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for a good show? Give me a woohoo! You're an enthusiastic crowd. I like that. Yo, that's right, that's right. Make sure you are drinking what that gentleman's drinking. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a great show lined up for you this evening. Your performer comes to you from Ireland, now living in Florida, has performed for many, many opening acts. Uh, Glenn Campbell, Cliff Richard, just to name a few. Would you please put your hands together and welcome to the stage, George Casey. Anybody out there, even with a small little bit of Irish blood, clap your hands. Anybody spot me? Oh my God, as long as you got a few alcoholics, we're going to have a party, okay? In my humble opinion, I don't do all Irish comedy, but in my humble opinion, the great mystery to Irish comedy is you never know if we're making fun of ourselves uh, or making fun of you. Oh, we're clever little people. And if we do something stupid, the Irish, and trust me now, we do it a lot. We're never ashamed. We don't sweep it under the carpet. We don't hide it. You know what we do? We go out drinking and tell everybody about it. That's what we do. And I'll show you, just to get started, how lovable the Irish are. Our comedy is very simplistic, very self-deprecating. Just three little Irish jokes only an Irishman could tell. I'm sitting on a stool in a bar in Dublin, sitting on a stool like that, minding my own business. And an Irish man walked up to me, a total stranger, but an Irishman. He walked up, looked me straight in the eye, with no expression whatsoever. And this Irishman said to me, the dumbest thing that's ever been said to me in my life on this planet. I'm not joking. This Irishman looked me straight in the eye, and he said to me, are you reading? that paper you're sitting on. <laughs> Did you hear me over here? Like you, I was in shock as well. I couldn't believe it. When the Irish in me took over, I couldn't let it go. You know what I did? I got up, I turned the page, and I sat down again. <laughs> That's how lovable we are. Two little Irish guys walk into a bar, they're giving the high five, they're all excited, they're jumping around. And the bartender says, calm down, this is a restaurant, what are you so happy about? And one little Irish guy says, well sir, we just put a jigsaw puzzle together, do you hear me? We put a jigsaw puzzle together, uh-huh, and we finished it in four months. <laughs> and the bartender says, what's so great about that? The little Irish guy goes, look. The box said two to five years. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up, okay? And the third one is my favorite. This Irish guy and this American guy were trying out for a job one day, and they're both qualified for the job. And the foreman says, you know what I'll do? I'll give you a simple test. I'll give you 10 questions each. All you have to do is run off, Write down your answers, come back. Let's see who does the best will get the job. Well, they both come back and the only problem was they both had nine right and one wrong. And the foreman said, that's it. I'm giving the job to the American guy. And the little Irish guy got all bent out of shape. He goes, hold on a minute, you can't do that. You know in your heart, that's wrong, wrong, wrong. That's discrimination. He had nine right and one wrong. And I ain't arguing. But I had nine right and one wrong. So why? Why would you give the job to the American guy? 
the foreman says, because the way he answered the fifth question. He wrote down, I don't know, and you wrote down, neither do I. 